Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a question of privilege. Last week, the merger between ABS-CBN and TB5 was announced. I think it was met by public skepticism based on the initial requests of TV stations and radio stations requiring comments from this representation. Mr. Speaker, to be honest, I think the merger left a bad taste in the mouth. It leaves much to be desired. It is public knowledge, Mr. Speaker, that two years ago, on the application for renewal of ABS-CBN's franchise, this Congress, or the 17th Congress to be more particular, denied the application for renewal because the 17th Congress was able to establish several violations that justified the denial of that franchise. What are these, Mr. Speaker? I can recall a long list of violations. ABS-CBN did not have a permit on the digital broadcast for all their channels. It has no permit for the encryption of its signal and its contents. ABS-CBN violated cease and desist order issued by the National Telecommunications, Telecommunications Commission. ABS-CBN also operated and sold illegally millions of TV Plus black boxes without the approval of the National Telecommunications Commission. ABS-CBN also made telecast on pay-per-view even without the authority of the conditional access system by the NTC. Mr. Speaker, there were flagrant violations, not only the rules and laws, but also the Constitution. I think even the Constitution was desecrated by ABS-CBN by violating the exclusive Filipino ownership and management of mass media by the issuance of what we call the Philippine Depository Receipts. And as I speak today, Mr. Speaker, Several employees of ABS-CBN who were terminated illegally by that network won their cases in the Supreme Court. Two cases of regularization and six cases of illegal dismissal. These cases were won in the Supreme Court, Mr. Speaker. And two of these already had entry of judgment issued by the Supreme Court. But the NLRC, Mr. Speaker, for, own, for unknown reasons, did not even lift a finger to help the workers. Some of them are older already, and some are dying already, Mr. Speaker. I can probably blame the concerned agencies of government who did not act on these violations. For example, the BIR promised at that time that they will look into those allegations of non-payment of taxes, of correct taxes, by employing a dubious subsidiary called Big Dipper to operate like a tax shield in order to obey, evade the payment of rightful taxes, billions of taxes due to the government, Mr. Speaker. There is a subsisting Memorandum order of NTC, Mr. Speaker, that a franchise grantee should not enter into commercial agreements in which the NTC has jurisdiction with those companies or parties that have obligations to the national government or the national government. It is my humble submission, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker that these violations, oh, by the way, Mr. Speaker, this representation calculated 
the administrative banner penalties that should be paid by ABS-CBN to the government. And my calculations totaled 1.6 trillion pesos. If, there, if this can be considered as obligations to the national government, then the NTC order, again, should be applied. Ang problema kasi, Mr. Speaker, this concerns agencies, NTC, the BIR, although it promised to look into the allegations of this tax evasion schemes, did not bother. They lacked the vigilance. They did not summon the agency or even the sense of duty required by the respective offices. And by every measure, Mr. Speaker, I think even TB5 has some obligations in this deal. With the substantial purchase, Mr. Speaker, of the outstanding stocks of ABS-CBN, I believe Section 10 of the franchise of TB5 was violated because the rights and obligations have virtually been transferred to ABS-CBN. Who puede ba, Mr. Speaker, na ang isang network na hindi na natin binigyan ng lisensya because of this established violations? Wala na siyang prangkisa. Pwede ba siyang sumakay ng ganun-ganun lang without settling the obligations to the country, to the government? Is it possible that something that cannot be achieved or obtained directly can be obtained indirectly? I think this is a basic victim in law, Mr. Speaker. We cannot do that. Section 10 of the franchise of TB5 also prohibits merger with other entities without prior approval of Congress. Wala pa po tayong approval. So I said, this particular deal must be looked into, Mr. Speaker. And I think because of this, because of this deal, we have yet to have let the proverbial cut out of the bag, Mr. Speaker. Why? Media Quest, the parent company of TB5, is owned by PLDT Beneficial Trust Fund. And the grapevine. Mr. Speaker, it's so loud that PLDT Beneficial Trust Fund is owned by an Indonesian national. So if we will remain is, Mr. Speaker, that the PDRs were utilized indirectly as conduits for foreigners to own mass media in this country by desecrating and still combating the very constitution that we have. Baka naman ang mangyari, ganito rin, Mr. Speaker. Magigising na lang tayo, and we will have to see deja vu once again. Mr. Speaker, somebody he said that the only, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. I humbly seek the good men of this chamber, Mr. Speaker, to unite and rally behind a good cause and do something. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Speaker.